Each time I want to create a YouTube video, I go through different processes, starting from finding a good idea for my next video, and then doing the recording session, and after that, taking all the recorded materials and start to do the editing, and at the end, finalizing the result, rendering their videos, and publishing in different channels that I have in different social networks. One of the main part of this process is of course creating a thumbnail for that video that can grab the most attention from the viewers and increase the engagement of the video, which is not an easy job to do. At the beginning, I used to use Photoshop to create and design my thumbnail, which was pretty good actually, because Photoshop was a very, very powerful tool to uh, edit photos, create visual effects, uh, add a text and everything that I needed to create one thumbnail. However, later on my focus changed to the Figma and Figma become the tool that I use the most. Therefore, I wanted to also do this task within the Figma. However, I cannot deny that Figma is not a powerful photo editing tool. So at some point I had to use the combination of these two tools uh, to be able to create my final results. So I used to use Photoshop to edit the visuals and then bring them into the Figma and add the branding materials such as logo and then text in that step. And later it got even worse. I used AI to create my visual assets and then bring them in the Photoshop, do the editing that I wanted and then took those assets into the Figma and you know the rest of the process. And this process was already very difficult for me using multiple different design tools, paying different licenses, and a lot of efforts to create one single thumbnail. And imagine that this was just one part of creating one video, like ideation phase, uh, the recording session itself, and editing already was very difficult for me. And I didn't want to really spend that much time on the thumbnail at the end. So I was looking for one way to reduce the effort there until Figma released many cool features that kind of helped me to do everything within the Figma itself, including editing images using AI and removing the background. These features already helped me a lot, but the last punch was when Figma integrated NanoBanana inside the Figma. So now I could use NanoBanana to create more consistent uh, images and assets for myself, and it was giving me the power to uh, edit my images more accurate. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how I am creating my images and assets using the Nano Banana within the Figma. So bear with me until the end of this video. And if you're new here, don't forget to smash the subscribe button, like this video, and share it with the other designers you are committed. Now, without further ado, let's get started. So here is the Figma file that I use to collect and create and design. So basically do everything for my thumbnails. Let me just show you one or a couple of examples uh, of how I used to create and design my thumbnails. Let's take this one as an example. Uh, if I select a frame, you can see that there are multiple child layers within this cover. The namings are not right. I, I, I actually work very quick and dirty for my thumbnails, but that's fine. I used a couple of elements such as this one, uh, like giving a glass effect and uh, the logo of the tool that I kind of use in that tutorial and videos, the image of my avatar or um, of my character, uh, the text layer and everything else, some other effects for the background for uh, the kind of a gradient effect behind the text to increase the contrast and everything else. So you, you, you could see that I use multiple layers to create my design, like exactly I used to do within the Photoshop. But later on, I tried to be more systematic. Therefore, I converted the asset that I used to use so often to component with different variants. For example, in this case, you can see that uh, the character that I have is already a component which has a different variance. For example, I can switch between different uh, fillings for my thumbnails for this character by just switching between different variants that I define for it, which was already kind of helping me to speed up the process, but still was limited 
you know, because when I was using the ChatGPT to create the background, uh, it was difficult to integrate it, the uh, kind of images that I had for the character itself into that background. So sometimes it wasn't matching so well with each other. But now I do not use any of these approaches. What I do is, which I'm going to show you now in detail, is to use the AI features within the Figma in order to design my thumbnail from scratch. So I don't use text layers. I don't use any kind of uh, layers in general or stylings or whatsoever within the Figma. I directly use the editing power that the AI gave me within the Figma and especially Nano Banana, which I'm gonna show you right now. So I'm going to switch to the full screen that you can see everything better. So at the moment, what I do is I uh, created one asset like this one, put the image of myself within it, uh, with the background that I designed within the ChatGPT or kind of I asked ChatGPT to generate for me, plus the stylings of the background element that I would like to see, or the, in general, the element that I would like to use in my thumbnail, which are usually like this. And I use this two to create one uh, kind of a character or the face for my thumbnail plus the other elements for my thumbnail. Of course, I can also use other stuff using a design tool within the Figma, but have in mind that I'm not gonna switch back to the ChatGPT or I'm not gonna open Photoshop for editing. So let's see how can I create another em kind of character with different emotion for the thumbnail that I would like to create. To keep this reference image on touch, I'm going to make one duplicate version. And while I'm selecting this image, I'm going to open the action menu from here. And then I'm gonna select or click on edit image, which is the AI tool. And if you don't have it in a recent, kind of menu and recent section, you can search for it in the search bar. I have it here, I'm gonna click on this. This will open a kind of a chat or prompt uh, text input for me, which I need to write down what exactly I want uh, that it happen to my uh, basically image. Here, for example, I would like to say that, I don't know, make the character look sad. And then you can click on the edit image. It's gonna take a couple of seconds. At the end, we're gonna get the result that we are looking for. I'm very confident actually. Here we are. You can see that the character, which is me, is fairly consistent. Maybe <laughs> it's not the best. However, you can also try multiple times with the same prompt or kind of emphasizing more on keeping the character consistent to get the better result. But what I forgot to mention, and which is very important, is that you need to switch to Gemini 2.5 Nano Banana if you wanna get more consistent results like this one that we got. So let's try another time. I'm gonna make another duplicate from the reference image. And I am going to click on the edit image. One more cool thing about this menu is that you have access to recent prompt that you use, for example, I'm going to click on the last prompt that we had. And instead of using, uh, kind of having a sad as an emotion, I would like to write down excited. So in this way, you can keep a record of all your prompt to have more consistent uh, result. Let's wait and see how the result is going to be this time. Here we go. We have consistency, we have a right emotion, and these are already usable for the thumbnail. But the cool thing is that you can go even further and ask more complex stuff. For example, I want this guy uh, to hold something in his hand. Like for example, I had one video in which I made a chest within the Figma. Uh, if you haven't watched that video, by the way, you can click on the pop-up banner on top. I will also leave the link uh, to that video in the description of this video. However, yeah, you can see that it, this character for this thumbnail is holding a chess stone, which I'm going to ask this one to do the same thing. Uh, I open the action menu, go to the edit, 
and here I'm going to say um, make the character hold a chess stone in hand let's click on edit image and see this time what is going to happen hopefully we're gonna get a decent result and here we go so a still result is fairly good okay now let's do the same thing for the other element that we have i'm gonna duplicate this layer and i am going to say that replace all icons with 3d model of different chess stones let's click on edit image okay it was already very impressive we have still one problem here which is going to be the next thing we can really kind of target and aim at a specific element within our design and ask the ai to do something about it for example i would like to remove that so i'm going to say remove the icon in the center and bottom of the image i don't know if it's clear for it or not but if you give more a specific kind of description then you're going to get better result of course but you can see that it's already did great job so now i have this asset and this asset what i can do is i can remove the background of this one and then put the background uh, like the character over this background this is one thing i can do or the other thing if i want to have more control is of course removing all these elements over this background have one layer only for background one layer for all the other elements and one layer for character but it doesn't matter it's depend on how you want to work so click this layer and or this image and then uh, use remove the background feature but before i do that also uh, in order to increase the quality of the image i would like to use this feature which is boost the resolution which will increase the kind of resolution of the image a little bit i'm not sure if it does any difference here but let's wait okay you could see the difference now this image is much more sharp and actually it's ready to be used so let's select the image one more time i'm going to use this time the remove background feature to remove the blue background behind the character and actually this feature is very accurate so i always happy to use it and the other thing is actually you can use it for uh, on multiple assets for example i'm going to select this three or uh, three images and then um, click on the remove background so in one go and that was pretty fast so the last step for creating thumbnail in this case was to just put the character over the background that i had i can go further i can add more effects i can ask ai to make an image a specific image that i have in my mind i can continue editing the existing assets and layers using the uh, nano banana to create more elements this is the way that i'm designing right now at the moment to create my thumbnails and it's very fast very accurate and I don't have to do even uh, the photo shooting for my thumbnails, which is already very, very kind of efficient and fast enough for me. Let me know what you create using AI integrated within the Figma. I'm very excited to see your works, of course. And don't forget to share your thought and opinion about this video and what you have seen in the comments section. I'm reading all the comments. And if you want, also you can join the Discord server that we have and there we can continue the conversation. Uh, plus, like this video, subscribe to my channel, and don't forget to share this video with other designers that you might think that they are going to also find it to help. That was it. Let's learn together and see you in the next video. Pretty cool, just show me the why.